So by now you guys have seen um, the conservation of energy um, method put to work in previous problems. Uh, for this problem, 13.2.3, we'll be using a lot of concepts from chapter 12, but also the main fundamental theorem of chapter 13, which is the work energy theorem. All right? We know it's T1, so for applying this to a system, T1, U1, 2, which this is your network over here. This, this is your network, equals T2. In physics, you probably saw it as W net uh, equals my change in kinetic energy, which this, this uh, what's it called? This way of writing it makes, I don't know, it just makes a lot more sense than the way they do it in this book. Beer makes, it, makes everything complicated. All right, so we're going to apply this theorem on for this problem okay so let's just get rid of this all right in this problem they're asking for the velocity of block b after block a has moved two meters all right so to get started let's first form a relationship between the accelerations of block a and block b and this is due to the datum over here so we're going to form a datum here and then we're going to say that, okay, I have this distance, and we'll call it xa. I'm sorry that it's hard to see. I should have not used neon green. Okay, we'll call that xa. Okay, we have xa. And then, uh, let's use another color. Let's use orange. And then over here, Let's do it. There's a fixed datum over here, so we're just going to take another 90 degree perpendicular to uh, these strings, all right? And then we're going to call this YB, okay? And we're going to have three of those. We're going to have YB here, YB here, and then YB here, okay? So it's going to be XA plus 3YB equals some constant okay so xa might get longer yb you know as xa gets longer yb's get a little shorter okay then if we just take a, t a couple time derivatives over here we have va right derivative of position gives you oops gives you velocity so then we have 3vb equals zero derivative of constant is zero and then another what the heck? Another derivative gives us three a b equals zero. Okay, so right away here we can see that there's a relationship between my acceleration a and b. Okay, it's uh, I guess we can write it. Yeah, we can just leave it like this. You know, so as A accelerates, B, uh, sorry, as B accelerates, let's say it has an acceleration of 1 or 10 or whatever it is, uh, A would accelerate three times faster, okay? And the same thing with velocity. If V's go VB is going at uh, 5 meters per second, then VA will be moving at 15 meters per second. We're talking about magnitudes as well. And then for velocity, uh, sorry, for position, there's a constant, so we can ignore this. And then as x moves, uh, or sorry, as y moves one meter up, then xa will move three meters to the left. Okay, so we're going to use this relationship between uh, for our problem. Okay. Sweet. All right, so now let's start um, breaking this problem down. All right. So... Usually, some professors might ask you to first prove that uh, your system is, in fact, moving, okay? So you, you want to try to prove, you want to try to show that it's not in static equilibrium. So in order to do that, I guess this will be part one. And this video will most likely be in, uh, broken down into a couple parts because this, these problems are, do take a little longer, okay? 
So the first part we'll do is uh, assume static equilibrium. Okay, part one. So let's do the block A. Okay, it has weight, it has normal force, it's getting pulled with a 250 newton force. Okay, and then let's see, it's got a tension pulling it back this way, and it's gonna have some friction. And let's see, some friction. And because we're saying, I'm, gonna, I'm assuming it's a static equilibrium, I am going to say there is static friction. Okay, and then we're gonna prove that. We're going to prove that it's actually moving. So we're going to say, okay, fx equals zero because we're assuming static equilibrium again. Okay. So dot. And then we're going to have, uh, let's do a coordinate system like this. So this is positive x, positive y. Okay. So we're going to say minus 250 newton force because it's pointing to the left plus t. Plus FS. And I put FS going to the right because if I'm assuming the person is pulling with 250 wants to move this object A to the left. So then friction wants to oppose that movement, therefore it wants to move to the right. Okay. We're gonna set that equal to zero. Then we're gonna do the same thing but in the y direction. And this one it's not hopping up or it's not floating or elevating, so it's always gonna be equal to zero in this case. For A. Okay, and this will be the weight. I'm just gonna cut to this. The weight equals the normal, okay? So what's the normal? Well, the normal is 30 times 9.8. 30 times 9.8. 294. Point three newtons. Okay, and then so we go back to our x equation. We're trying to find this. Okay, um, and we're going to compare it to this maximum static friction, which is mu s times the normal. Okay, and that's going to be 0 0.25 times 294.3. Okay, this is 73.575 newtons. Okay, so we want to compare this to this for, uh, static friction from the x equation. Okay, so then we'll have to do the same thing but for block B. Now, block B, right, it's got Two, for, two tension forces going up this way, right? And then one up, one over here, okay? And we know that the, if it's like a massive string, whatever, frictionless pulleys and everything, the tension in the singles in that same string is going to remain constant throughout the whole thing. So we know that the tension at A, if you look at my mouse, we know that the tension here, that's gonna that magnitude is going to be the same everywhere where you have tension, okay? So then there's going to be T, 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 okay? And then you have the weight, okay? And again, it's an aesthetic equilibrium. I'm going to say that it's not accelerating up, okay? And I have 3T minus W equals 0. This leaves me with, uh, sorry, T equals, oh yeah, the weight of B over 3. Okay, what's the weight of B? Well, 25 times 9.81 divided by 3. Tension will be uh, 25 times 9.81 divided by 3. 81. 
0.75 newtons. Okay, so that's the tension in uh, that's going through this string. All right. So now we look at going back to equation, the first equation that we did, the x equation for uh, block A. All right. Now we have that Fs. So moving everything else to the right hand side of the equation, we have 250 minus tension equals, and then we know ten, we just found tension, 81.75 newtons, so we're going to do 250 minus get 168.25 newtons. Okay, so now let's compare the two values, the maximum versus the one that we just calculated. So we have Fs is indeed greater than Fs max, therefore it's moving. So it's not in static equilibrium. And of course it's not going to be because it's a dynamics problem. Okay, But some professors might ask you to prove this part first, which is really annoying. Okay. All right, so we'll pick it up in the next part to this video, all right?